Carl and Brendan here from Games, Brains and Headbanging Alive, GBHBL.com for sure. And we're checking out something extreme, something famously extreme as well. It comes from Deicide. It is Once Upon the Cross, the third studio album by the American death metal band. Released April 18th, 1995 by Roadrunner Records. Not only was this album way before my taste in anything extreme, I've never really gotten to Deicide to date. I think that good, they're a, a death metal band famous for the right for many reasons as much because of Glenn Benton but I think their style of death metal has been done better what came afterwards basically they're pioneers and they I respect and acknowledge that but then there's better after if that makes sense I, I, I get what you're saying mm. I mean I think they're still you know I, I'm, a, I'm a fan mm. uh was a fan back when this album came out um but I think they're still relevant today, day aside. You know, if you think like um, their most recent album, Overtures of Blasphemy, was a fantastic album a couple of what? years back. You know. Once Upon the Cross, then. The title What's... track is what starts us off. Uh, brutal, what a chunky ass start. The blazing pace of the drums, the ferocious riffing, deeply gut with vocals. It's a very intense, but obviously death metal start. I've got no complaints here. Uh, although this is one of those where I immediately as it started, I was like, yeah, how often would I listen to this track if I wasn't doing the track by track? And the answer is probably not often. I've listened, I mean, I've listened to this album generally a lot over my life, although I don't think very often recently. Um, you know, I, in fact, I can't really, can't really think. Uh, uh, <laughs> it may be in the, like, the last five or six years of that even coming on. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, 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 obviously I'm a big fan of the album. I was, this was kind of my era uh, a little bit, mm. um, kind of getting into the heavier stuff. I don't think I listened to this album when it came out. I think I listened to it a few years after it came out right. <clears throat> and went back towards this sort of music. Uh, the one thing I would say about Once Upon the Cross, excuse me for a sec, <clears throat> is that it definitely sounds its age, 100%. Yeah. You know, the very first, I mean, in, it's, in a way, it's kind of, it was a little nostalgic, the sound. Mm. This was very much the sound of the, the more extreme death metal bands back in the day. You know, it's a bit it's muddy and it's foggy and, you know. Um, but I, I, I love the song. I think it's a fantastic song. I think it's fast, it's brutal and violent. It was everything a teenage me wanted, was into. And I am looking at this through nostalgic rose-tinted glasses, absolutely. I know that and I'm okay with that. Um, mm. The drums are ridiculous. The drums are ridiculous throughout. You hear that pretty much a lot. The drummer was insane. A guy called Steve Ashheim. Uh, vocals are dark, heavy, riff is banging. Great solo at the end too. Brings back a lot of memories for me. Cool. Christ denied. Uh, boom, this one gets my neck muscles twitching. The crushing rhythms, very filthy versus speeds that have me dreaming of circle pits. Your guitar solo is one of those that sound kind of jammed in, but the chaotic, chaotic nature of the track makes it work really, really well for me. Very aggressive stuff, very enjoyable. Big fan of this one. Yeah, it's a very good song. It's very fiery. Uh, it's got a bit more going on with the vocal mix, a little bit higher backing than the first one did. You know, fast, very, very fast. Yeah. <laughs> it's in your face. It's strong drums again. The riffing's good. I quite like the solo. Uh, another ending solo, which is definitely their thing um, back then. No time to fit that in in the middle. You can't exactly ask the drummer to stop, can you? <laughs> <laughs> Once those limbs get moving, there's no stopping him. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just, just a really strong song, man. Yeah, it's a really, really aggressive, strong song. Sometimes when it comes to the solo, it's kind of what think of like the guitarist quietly going, can I, can I, can I do it now, Glenn? Can I do it? I think they probably just like, you know, they just went right to the drummer, right? Go. And he <laughs> just went. And then the guitarist was just like, when he runs out of energy and he's got, he goes, <laughs> and he goes, right, me. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Uh, when Satan rules his world, no major shakeups at the sound here. I mean, that is the album. It's chunky. It's vomitous. There, so I'd certainly know how, to keep things constantly heavy. It's kind of what you were just saying there. To me though, the guitar solo doesn't sound quite right here. It's so brief that it's almost pointless, but also it's really low in the mix to the point where I was like, oh, oh yeah, something's happening there. Yeah. Yeah, he wasn't ready, was he? 
Clearly, clearly. He wasn't ready for his moment. Or the drummer was like, no, I'm ready to go again. <laughs> <laughs> just stopped, up, literally just stopped to wipe my forehead. Mm. Um, but I love this song. Uh, this is one of my favourites on the album. Really? Um, it's, it's, it's quite a short track, which makes you think you're going to just get an insane blast of aggression. Mm. But I actually think this has quite a lot going on and it's quite progressive for the time. Um, I think there's quite a bit of groove in there. Sometimes hard to find, but it is in there. Um, there's some cool tempo changes halfway through the verse and vocal line, which I thought was really clever. Yeah. They're, the kind of, they're literally within the sentence. They stop and go off a slightly different direction to end the sentence, um, which back then would probably be called not true metal for doing that in a death metal song, whereas these days bands are doing stuff like that for fun. Yeah, that's true. Um, drums and riffs are cool as fuck. Vocals are spat at a mad pace. And I love how all of the chaos then sort of sinks back in at the end of it for this kind of headbanging rhythm to, to end the track. Yeah, I think it's a fantastic song. Yeah, there's a lot of layers there that you kind of highlight. That I do wonder if um, stuff that I might have missed because of the pure sheer blast of the drums at times yeah. and the speeding pace, that uh, on is, if, 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 is this an album that needs... I, I would honestly... I, I, I mean, I can't say this for a fact but i would imagine i didn't notice any of these layers the first time i listened to it when i was younger i would imagine i listened to this as nothing but a straight up 30 minute blast of aggression and it's only now listening back to it having heard it many many times that i'm able to i guess because i know what's coming mm. i can listen to it you know more deeply being a nerd about it basically yep kill the christian uh i was thinking at this point that this album would inevitably suffer from some form of bleeding and to me, this is one that started off with that. I figured it would start to it start to sound a little bit familiar with the start, that blast of death metal and so on. However, the frenzied pacing with the vocals that get a little higher and scratchier works really well for me. And that and the fact that it's fucking thick sounding, I ended up really enjoying this one. Yeah, I think it's a great song. I love the song title too. I love the fact that it was just nice and in your face, no innuendos, no irony. There was just, what should we call this one? Kill the Christian? Yeah, all right. And how will the chorus go? Let's just shout Kill the Christian over and over again. It's straightforward, <laughs> no nonsense. In it. Yeah. But I think it's a great song. I really do think it's a very, very good song. I think, um, you know, like a lot of what's come before, it's quite fiery. But I think if you can pick some layers apart in it, you you know, you do notice things like what you said, that you notice the vocals are occasionally at a slightly different pitch. It's different. Just yeah. Slightly. Just little tweaks, but it just freshens the song, you know, mm. a little bit. Um, there's some little pace changes in the verse. Even though the chorus is basic, it kind of works for this song. You know, that kind of just roared repeating of Kill the Christian. I think because of the sort of aggressive aggression they were putting across. Yeah. You know, I don't think you needed to get too clever with that. I think that kind of works. It's... Yeah. I think it's a, another one that brings back a lot of memories for me. I remember the song very, very well. And I just think for me, four tracks in, I was like, this album's banging. Yeah. It's got that, it's so anti-religion, so anti-Christian. It's it's yeah. it's, it's uh, almost funny to a degree. It's weird how what might have offended back then compared to these days is so blasé almost. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you, you know, I, I, I can't remember any of this happening, but I imagine they had problems getting like their album covers stocked in Walmart and <laughs> Asda and all the normal record stores, you know. You know, back in the day when you'd go into like one of the record stores and they would have the CDs and the headphones that you could listen to a particular track, I suspect Day Sides Kill the Christian was not one of the options. No, that was in, that was like in a box that was a, like a, a box from the 1500s, but it was wrapped in chains with a crucifix on top. <laughs> that only one member of staff was allowed to go and take copy of that if they were being sold. Oh, great. Uh, Trick of Betrayed, short and sharp, very evil sounding, something straight, ripped straight out of hell. Fiery, chaotic, short enough to not bore, but long enough to kind of make you feel that little bit exhausted, as you often do at the end of a Day Side track. Yeah, yeah. Um, the only thing, I mean, it's not a negative really, but it was similar to what you thought would happen on the previous song. I kind of felt was had happened a bit with Trick of a Trade, which was not with the songs blending or bleeding into each other, but with yeah. the intros. I felt like the intro was becoming, like if somebody was to put this album down and say cut the first five seconds from each song, that it wouldn't, it would be very close to identical. Um, so I was a little bit like, you know, that, you know, kind of feel like I've heard this intro <laughs> already. But the song itself is great. Uh, again, you know, it's um, there's a bit more of a mix going on in the main song versus mm. great, lots of vocals, different edges to the vocals again. But I think works better actually than just the one sort of 
you know, tonal flat note going all the way through. Yeah. Um, the drums are just insane. Like Geezer is a machine. Um, and the solo is fantastic as well. I really like the solo. Cool. They are the children of the underworld. I uh, wrote, bang those fucking heads. This is heavy as balls. The drum beat is insane. There's a lot for me. But I actually think Benton, Glenn Benton, vocalist, is absolutely on fire here. I'm proper into this one because, as well, there's a little thrashy feel to it. Well, yeah. it's undeniably death metal. There's this thrashy edge to it that made this one stand out so much from the pack, particularly at this stage where we are, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, six, tr six of nine. So, yeah, really different. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a great song as well. Mm. And it is, you know, it does, I, I, I guess I'm trying to think how it would have been when I listened back then. It probably would have been the evidence that, you know, there's more to day aside than, yeah. than what you've seen, you know, that they have they have some tricks up their sleeve a little bit, you know. Mm. Uh, the catchiness is just insane. You know, you almost feel like you know, day aside, it's not meant to be this catchy. Catchiness. I'm gonna yeah. listen to an album called Once Upon the Cross by Day Aside and talk about how catchy it is. <laughs> Say that word. <laughs> you know? But uh, it's great, it's a really good song, really, really good. Everything about it. I love his vocals in it, I love the drums again, uh, the solo's great. Uh, another ending solo again, which I did point out was definitely seems to be a thing of Day Aside's this album. Um, you know, of always kind of, not always, but often ending with the solo to kind mm. of bring the song out. But yeah, great, good stuff. Agreed, agreed. Behind the light, thou shall rise. Faster we go. And I kind of described this one as like a fucking out of control bus that's just speeding down until it hits the roadblock that is the riffs here. It just keeps coming and coming and coming. Very energetic, very hyper, very nasty. No complaints here at all. Yeah, and I like it too. Uh, my only, I'd, you know, I wouldn't have had an issue with this. I felt that this was probably the one that was most similar to other songs on the album that I felt like, okay, probably didn't have an awful lot of an identity of its own and often there were points in it where I was like oh I heard that in this track or I heard that wow. in this track uh you know so it's probably you know despite the fact that I was impressed by everything that happens in the song it's the closest to a filler track on the album for me but you know if it's filler it's like really really good filler yeah yeah you if know? it wasn't there you wouldn't miss it but nah, yeah, it's no harm it kind of had to be there you know, I think the album's like 28 minutes long you can chuck yeah. you can't really cut anything <laughs> Uh, and we're already, yeah, we're already at the penultimate effort with To Be Dead. Uh, I'm enjoying this one, but I will admit at this point I wrote, and I'm listening to it, I wrote, well, I'm kind of glad it's coming to an end because there's only so much of this constant blasting death metal that you can take, even with little touches here and there. This one does have some variety in riffing and there's a sort of blasphemous intent. It burns with a lot of energy. It's solid, solid as fuck. Yeah, uh, pretty similar on that one, to be honest. Uh, catchy as fuck intro again. Very heavy, very in your face like everything has been so far, really. Mm. Um, drums are great, guitars are great, vocals are great. I like the chaotic ending with the screeching guitars and the kind of offbeat drums. I think that was pretty cool. So yeah, I just ended, it's not really a favorite, but you know, it's still just a very good song. Perfect. Which brings us to Confessional Rape, the finale. One of the longer offerings, it's hard wearing Tough as Balls finale that makes zero changes to the formula. Instead, it's day aside going out as they began effectively. Fifth, filthy and guttural blaze of heaviness, frantic, Good guitar rhythm, heavy as fuck percussion, dirty, sickening vocals. Simply put, at this point, what's not to enjoy, particularly as you're leaving the album? And it's just like, you know what? I can go one more song with you doing this shit. Hit me with it. Yeah, but I mean, for, we, we, we took different things out of this song, um, to be honest. Uh, again, maybe my older mind looking back at something I'd already heard before. Mm. But, you know, I, 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 I quite I, I like the song very, very much. I think it's a very good song. I love the deeper, chuggier moments, which I was kind of finding in the song, you know. Mm. Um, I thought they broke the song up wonderfully and gave it a unique signature that wasn't really present on the rest of the album. If anything, it showed what they I could go on to do. Um, very, very heavy, of course. The drums and guitars are quite relentless. So in that, it's similar. Yeah. You know, it's, it's quite punishing. But I also felt it just felt a little different here with some little twists here and there, like a slowed down more rhythmic vocal delivery at times um, in the verses, which had an impact, uh, especially then when it goes from that into the sort of heavier chug, mm. you know, and I love the fact that they chose to then fade out the song to close the album, whereas everything prior had always ended in chaos, like with a solo or something on this, it was like a closing as it was like, right, 
you know, all just kind of gently fade away to nothingness. It does have that finale feel. It did nail yeah. that aspect. So yeah, yeah, I'd be a big fan of, well, big fan of the album, obviously, as you can tell. Yeah. Um, so thought it was a good way to end it. Agreed. It's a good. It's there's no, like, there isn't there isn't for me there isn't a, a single bad track on it. It's just some are better than others. I mean, you try and you know <clears throat> if you put yourself in what would have been my shoes back then, mm. uh, having having kind of started moving towards heavier stuff, maybe started to get into bands like Cradle and just get just literally dabbing your toe in the water a little bit, and then getting this album for the first time. You know, this this was the first proper extreme metal album I probably listened to, I think. And at that, it was shocking, I guess, because I hadn't heard anything like it before, you know. Um, And I think it would have that impact on anyone, you know, at that age, as you're getting into the heaviest stuff and then, bang, you have that in front of you. Mm -hmm. It's going to do one of two things, isn't it? You're either going to turn and run and go, yeah, this isn't for me. Yeah. Or it's going to suck you in and, you know you get kind of further and further into into death metal and whatnot. And yeah, I think you're right with what you said at the beginning. I think at a point then you probably outgrow Day Aside because, I, you know, I agree that there are bands that have definitely surpassed them, you know, bands that came long after them that have surpassed them. Although I still have a lot of love for Day Aside. <laughs> Nost- nostalgic love. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm missing, in it? I don't have that nostalgic feel for yeah. the band in any way. No, exactly. I mean, I think probably the... The most interesting thing when I was writing up or looking up some facts about this album, trying to kind of trip down memory lane stuff, mm. um, was uh, the fact that if, if you've seen Day Aside live, but you've never listened to this album, but you've heard songs from this album live, and then you actually listen to this album, is that this album would sound nothing like what you've heard uh, because of the fact that, so obviously it's like 28 minutes long or just short of 30 minutes long. Yeah. Um, and uh, <clears throat> Steve Asheim, the drummer on it, said like even when he's listened back to it, it just seems very slow because they've always played those songs live faster, but actually they played them faster when they recorded the record too. The problem was that they went in the studio in 94, they he recorded the drum t- tracks at the speed he had been using for practicing. And when the album was finished, it only came to 22 minutes and the record label was like, nah, no good. Um, but they didn't have anything else and they weren't planning to do anything else. So the record label slowed the album down to stretch it to 30 minutes and i just find that to be such an insanely interesting fact because if you were to there's only nine tracks on this album and you had to shake that to stretch it by essentially eight minutes Mm. so the original recording of this means that you could probably take a minute off every song on this so you wouldn't lose any of the song but you would compress it in by a minute so when we listen to this and we go my god that's fast my god that's heavy can you just imagine how insane it would have been if you know, the insanely heavy when Satan rules his world instead of being three minutes long was two minutes long with everything still in it. It, it might have been unbearable. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't make any sense because even if you were to listen to it now and say you put it on two times speed, you it wouldn't work. It wouldn't sound right. to what No, I- no, it sounds crazy, doesn't it? I mean, yeah, at the end of the day, it's only a statement from a drummer and they're all meant to be mental anyway in it. So it could turn out that it's actually when they recorded it was 95 minutes long really really slow uh, a kind of do- doom album and the record label sped it up <laughs> there you go John uh, and says you're all mental <laughs> they're all meant to be loons aren't they well what are your top three tracks then uh they are the children of the underworld mm-hmm. when satan rules his world and once upon the cross right we are one we are one for three i also have they are the children of the underworld but my others are kill the christian and christ denied those are my three for this album yeah good choices Genocide, once upon the cross let us know what you think of it in the comments thank you very much for watching you can check us out on gbhbell.com as well as on facebook instagram twitter and tumblr go to patreon to help us out over there that's patreon.com forward slash gbhbl as well as big cartel where you can find some of our merchandise we have a podcast running on soundcloud and apple podcasts and of course if you like this video Do us a favour, hit the subscribe button and help the channel grow. Games, horror and heavy metal, what else is life for?